Hey guys, so this is uh, just a quick video. I'm probably not even gonna do any editing to this. I just uh, kind of wanted to show, um, a lot of you have probably seen the switch at one point or another. This is the switch that you will find in most Commodore monitors and uh, a lot of other monitors actually. I think these are in the Ataris and, and some others. But uh, what happens to these is they stop working. They actually, you won't be able to push them in anymore because they just won't stay. So what you end up having to do is you have to end up like holding them down, wedging a piece of paper in between the, the uh, button and you know, whatever. But I, I looked for these online to see if I could find a replacement because you know, uh, I'm trying to fix the monitors. Well, these switches are so damn expensive. You can still buy them. Um, and I don't know if they're new old stock, but they sell them on AliExpress. They sell some that are similar on uh, on eBay, but they're not 100%. And I like the original, and I'm also all about DIY. So I figured, you know, how hard could it be to just fix this switch? Uh, number one, they don't make it easy to get into because if you look, there are four spots here. One, two, three, four or sorry, six, five, six. And this, uh, I would, uh, basically I would call these uh, plastic rivets. Um, and what happens is uh, they, when they design these cases, uh, the, the bottom piece, the black piece, uh, the pegs are just a little longer, they stick out in the plastic, and then they melt those down into the white piece to kind of hold them together. So what you have to do is you have to take a razor blade and kind of just go around the little nubs there until you have cut away most of the black plastic and then you can kind of uh, wedge the uh, the uh, the top portion the gray portion of the case out off away now you have to be careful while doing this and you have to make sure that the contacts are completely free of any solder because the slots that those contacts go through are very very thin so you have to make sure that they are absolutely clean because if not this thing will actually pull them out along with it, which is not that big a deal, um, but it's gonna make trying to put the switch back together just that much more difficult. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead, I've already taken this apart, and I've already actually fixed this switch, um, and I think that, you know, at some point we have to ask ourselves, uh, what is going above and beyond doing uh, things yourself, right? Uh, when it comes to fixing these little things, I think maybe I, I, I'm, I've come close to my breaking point on this. So um, let me just show you the intricacies of what's in here. Um, if I can focus. If you look, you have a contact over here, this little tiny thin metal strip, and then you have another one over here on this side, okay? So these are held in place by these two contacts. And then what happens is when this flips over, Okay, when this switch is de depressed and this flips over, what it does is it connects this to that and this to that. So what we do is we push the switch in and see the metal, uh, the metal pieces, they're actually moving. So now they're making contact and at this point we can let the switch go and the contact stays. When this is broken, the contact does not stay and the switch literally just bounces back like that. So what makes this actually break down is it doesn't have anything to do with any of the pieces in here. What it has to do with is actually a tiny little piece of plastic underneath the uh, button mechanism, whatever you wanna call it. This piece of plastic is this piece right here. Let me just move this out of the way. That's this, okay? That lives underneath here. And I'm gonna lift this out in a second and I'm gonna show you um, what I did. But what happened is there's a tiny little nub on this plastic. You can see where it's in the middle there. There's like a, there's like a, a hole where a piece of plastic nub just kind of used to stick out, right? It used to stick out maybe about a millimeter off the plastic and you can see that it's gone okay so that renders this pretty much useless so what i did 
is I took that, I took the measurements and everything, and I went and I 3D printed a replacement, okay? Now obviously, as you can tell, this is uh, not exactly the same size. This was my first kind of revision of this. The, uh, the nub is way too big and um, I don't have any like rounding on anything. So it's, it's very, very crude. Um, and this, this did not work. So I kept making revision after revision after revision. And finally, my last revision was almost perfect, but I still had some issues. So finally, what I ended up doing is to my last revision, I ended up using the synthetic grease and that gave me just uh, the the right amount of, of uh, I guess, um, uh, frictionless movement <laughs> for this thing to move back and forth, which is actually what it's doing. So let me go ahead and try and remove this without breaking anything and without like, and, and, and holding the phone. So like, all right. So I'm gonna just, there, okay. So, and this kind of came up just a little bit, so we're gonna put that back down. Um, but as you can see, this just kind of lays in here like that, and it slides back and forth. And, and the reason that it does this is if you look at the back of the, the button mechanism, it has like this this path, these these channels for this thing to go through. So when you're pressing the button in, this slides, this piece slides, and then it holds this in place. So then when you press the button in again slightly, right? There's a there's a a piece here that then moves this to the other side and then it allows it to slide freely back down to the bottom, moving this slider back all the way to get ready for the next button pressing, okay? So I've already pressed this button probably 50 times since I've put this piece in, and it seems to be able to hold together well enough for me to have put the top back on and then continue to test it, which it, it still works fine. Um, and the switch is working again. So now as far as putting this back together, obviously we can't remelt the plastic because those things are too short now. But, um, you know, there are two ways of doing this. Number one, you can use super glue, which will pretty much guarantee that you will never open this thing ever again. So if this thing ends up breaking again, you're kind of screwed. So um, the only other thing that I can recommend at this point uh, to put this back together is to just wrap electrical tape around it. And honestly, uh, the width of this from like this corner to that corner is pretty much the, the right kind of width that you want to put electrical tape around. So I'm gonna put this back together really quick. And I'm gonna have to put the phone down for a quick second so that I don't mess anything up because Got the button back in. So now um, we should be able to easily slide the top back over. I'm gonna try to capture this the best I can while also getting it to go on there. Just can't be done, can it? Not with one hand. got it started here. Uh, the one thing you'll want to remember is that when you're pushing this back in, you'll want to pull back on this spring because that spring sits in this little groove here. So let me see if I can do this. Let's pull the spring back. Push down on this. And I was pointing to the wrong groove, by the way. The groove that I was referring to is this one here that you see the spring going over. Okay. So now that we've got this back together, you can push it and it stays in. Push it and it releases. 
Ah. Switch works perfectly fine now. So all we got to do is wrap some electrical tape in it, uh, around it, and then uh, put it back in service. And you see, like, I, um, you see how clean these contacts are? That's how clean you have to get them before they'll actually slide through these thin little slots. Um, so if you do decide to try and go the route of trying to repair this switch, which I highly recommend against, although, um, you know, it's, it's a fun DIY project if you want to tear your hair out. If, you're, if, you're, if you like repairing small and tiny things, like if, if you're a watchmaker, this would be a perfect uh, project for you. Uh, any kind of like uh, jewelry making, this is the kind of thing you're going to want to, you know, sink your teeth into. But if you uh, are work, used to working with bigger projects, this is not for you. I almost lost my mind last night when I was trying to put this back together. It was driving me absolutely insane. Once you, like, there's a point. If, if you can get this off without removing these four, if you can leave those, because they'll actually slide out. They're literally just slid in and, and they're held in there by friction until this thing is back on, okay? Once this thing is back on, it holds everything in place. But until then, these... Once you remove this, is, these are in, held entirely by friction. So they will just slide right out with it. And what happens then is that there's a little black piece in here that moves back and forth that is tensioned with a spring. So if you remove these, the two leaves will come out with it. They'll fall out. The black piece with the spring will fall out. Ask me how I know. Um, anyways, if you find yourself in that position to have to put that back together, I feel for you. It's it's not fun. Um, it's completely possible because I did it. It took me way too long. Um, probably way more time spent trying to fix this than to actually buy a new one. But either way, it was a fun project. So what I will do for you, though, is if anyone's interested, I will list the uh, the file for this, the STL, so you can 3D print it. Um, obviously, you're only going to be able to print this with an SLA printer to have any sort of function whatsoever. I tried this on my other printer and it was just not gonna happen. Maybe if you have a very, very small nozzle, you might be able to uh, print it, um, but I, I didn't have any luck with that whatsoever. So, um, I'll post the file for that. Other than that, maybe I, I might Man, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't actually want to even sell these. So, no, I, I will not sell these on my website. Uh, I will release the file. If someone really, really wants me to print one for them and, and um, wants to attempt this repair, then I will gladly do that. But I, I am, I don't want to get into the business of trying to sell these tiny little things. Um, it's just not something I'm interested in. Anyways. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this maybe taught someone that not everything needs to be thrown away. Um, you can pretty much fix almost just about anything. So uh, even a mechanical switch that seems to be lost forever, don't, don't give up on it. Now, when I put this back in, I'm not going to solder the cables on. I'm actually going to crimp them with uh, spade connectors and I'm going to slide those over instead of soldering, um, which, you know, I, I, maybe they were trying to save some money on materials while doing this, but I, I think that this, that's going to be a better approach. So now I'm going to have be able to have a uh, fully functional 1084S monitor uh, that's going to have, you know, a switch with a modern piece of component inside back from the 80s. So that's cool. Anyways. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and comments go down below. Questions, feel free, and I'll see you guys in the next video.